And welcome back. This is Kotel uh, for another War Rights event. I hope you all had a good weekend. And I actually have two guest commentators today. Uh, one from the HD, Mr. Engel. How you doing, good sir? Hello, man. Yeah, I'm doing great. I mean, I thought might as well see how the air is up here and check out the battlefield from above. Maybe see hidden tactics that we can utilize for ourselves. There you go. I get to get a little bit of perspective, especially from... I think you're the first arty guy that I've had as a guest commentator, so I really... And this is actually a pretty good map here um, for that on Pry... Uh, Pry and then I also have, back by uh, popular demand, uh, Mr. Liam. How are you doing, sir? Doing very well. Uh, yeah, I'm back up here because I was like, I'm taking a break from leading the day. I like to just be up in the sky and just see what's going on. So, back out. Yeah, so in uh, another uh, Fort Georgia takeover for the channel, so I'll keep it consistent. I've had a Fort Georgia guy on every day this weekend, and two of the times by you, so. But, yeah. uh, should be fun. Uh, we got a Pride Ford, as I said, 273 on the server cap, 142 on the CSA, 132 on the Union, so a little bit imbalanced, but not too bad. Um, I guess starting with you, Angle, what are you uh, expecting to see from Artie on both sides for this uh, for this map? As an Artie man myself, uh, I expect a very, very hard policy towards all or behind the point. Since you know there's this little divot that leads up to point, the Union forces like to position themselves behind that little defilade or on top of the defilade to do pop-up volleys. And if they are experienced Artie men there, I, I expect them to have trained and well-timed shots there and also depending on however the union already is going to be acting they will be catching a slapping from the CSA already so speaking as an already man myself i would designate a gun to counter battery and the rest to slap the infantry uh, looks like on the union we got 11th ms for already exclusive and on csa we have let me take a look lfl under forbin fort georgia again with their gunners and uh, two core under Tomato Girl. So, um, oh no, I don't think is it Fort Georgia? Yeah, yeah, Anton. I see Anton over here. Oh, did he make corporal? Oh, very yeah, nice. Yeah, um, the the drill actually got promoted by uh, Sean Walt, the second lieutenant. So, very and, nice. Uh, get some promotions in there. I'll do a I think we're on live. Uh, we are live. I'll do a quick roll call as I start moving up. So on the CSA team, we got Fort Georgia under Colonel Owens, JB under Captain Schumacher. Um, 11th MS, Major Fletcher, and AGL under Juicy B, along with that point from SB, Captain Victor for 4th New Jersey. Then we've got HD under Colonel Coach, 20th Georgia under Major Canada, 2 USC under Captain Eddie, 13th Georgia under Major Cawthorn, A and V6 Alabama under Mi Captain Gamebot, DB under Lieutenant Denisimo. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I think all A and B might be all going together. Oh, and the Union Artillery is going off towards the CSA Artillery. So, first shot of the game is counter-battery action. Before the units have uh, moved in place, before the chess pieces have engaged the enemy, well, we're trying to knock out the support system. Yep, it looks like. Let's see if I can finish this real quick. Uh, AN, uh, NYV under Pilot and uh, Mr. Parker. Uh, two Corps under Zio Panama, LFL under Colonel Pamas. TB under Galfe, uh, HL under Captain Lamat. And that is just about everyone, and we got the action, so I'll shut up on that. <laughs> yeah, it seems like wow. the Union are just went hard. Wow, wow. What do you, yeah, what do you think about this initial move, Liam, for the Union to go in so hard so early? Um, I mean, uh, they've got numbers, and also they do have the ticket advantage, but they have been kind of caught out quite stringy. But if they get that little breach hold in that definitely there, they can maybe push the CSA back over. But that one thing is just that position is so good for CSA Arde to hit. Just that right there, because they're right on the tip of that definitely for that little hill. So we'll see what happens if the CSA Artillery capitalizes on it. It looks like LFL's already pulling off here. What do you think? Do you think uh, the Union should, uh, I'm sorry, the CSA should uh, try to contest it, or do you think they should pull back and let them seize their position? I mean, I would, me prefer, I would let them seize that kind of open position and try and use it, like those rocks on point or like the death lead as best as possible. And maybe try, or if there was no one on the left flank, I would try and pull it to those left rocks and try and get some uh, side shots from them. Angle, I uh, saw a little bit of that Arty shot, man. What are you, what are you thinking about the uh, current CSA Arty? Uh, what should they be focusing on right now, you think? 
I think the currency is ARD. I actually haven't checked how many guns they have. It looks like three. Three or four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like I said, since the Union also has RD, I would like one gun to basically just take care of the Union Union gun and the rest just focus on the rest of the Union. They are in a very good position. They have a direct line of sight to the CSA RD and there is an immense potential for red confetti here. And the, the ground is already full of bodies with an actual RD shot like a minute ago. Absolutely painting the picture. There's, There's another, another one. one. Oh my god, I can't catch up. Yeah, I, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, coming back to uh, what you asked around the point, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in don't give uh, give them an inch. I would not let them seize the ground at all because it would allow them to reposition themselves and have a new base of attack. Yep, and I, it looks like, speaking of, uh, that is exactly what the CSA did. They fought and stood their ground. They didn't charge in, but uh, between Artie and uh, infantry fire, a little bit of combined arms operations, the Union has been scrambling back here in defeat. And look at that ticket difference. Union already half a way down on a morale state. CSA barely touched. Oh, another counter battery shot sending shrapnel and shockwaves to the Union Arty. No visible effect, but disruption. And how important is disruption to a counter battery? Um, you know what, what? What should you be trying to do as a counter battery guy? What, what should be your ultimate objective? You think? Your ultimate objective should be just, like I said, disruption. Disruption can be coming in soft form, just knocking enemies over or knocking the enemy gunner's gun out of commission or even to the side or ultimately eliminating them, because since this is a ticket-based game, all of the RD guys are rarely in formation, so most of them are skirmish tickets. More, sometimes more lucrative than an infantry line that's in formation. Yeah, very true. I mean, you get a guy skirmishing, you get nine tickets out of lines, you can get, you know, ten tickets, you know. Get ready, boys, get out of here! That's why RD men were such well sought targets of sharpshooters. And speaking of, it looks like we have an element over here to Corzio Panama moving up to just to do just that. What do you think about this move here, Mr. Liam, or T uh, Leo um, moving over? I mean, now he's getting some, uh, you know, uh, union moving. Uh, so that can cause the CSA some tickets. But I do quite like the idea if it was just him. And that Union Ardy, because you can pick off some good tickets from there. I, I, if I have like a small skirmish unit, I would try and suck around and do yeah. that. Well, well look there. at the results. Looks like the Ardy got turned on him, and he is yep. running back. So, But then one thing that also does is it kind of draws a Union unit out. And then that counter battery uh, from that CSA can maybe focus on oh, them. Dead, but uh, as soon as they get away, then, you know, it's back to that counter battery. But it looks like the Union have all regrouped and either in the center or on, on that right side of CSA left. Yeah, speaking of, looks like we got Fort Georgia here on this tree. Uh, what do you think about the position Mr. Owens has placed his men in? I mean, considering the tickets you have compared to the Union at the moment, uh, I don't I don't see it as wrong, especially when LFL's there uh, supporting you. Uh, but if it, was like a dis if it was a different situation, like the, the Union had those bushes and had that like picket fence, I would highly, uh, you know, do not do that. Try and use those rocks and find the best cover you can. Uh, but at this situation, I quite like that idea, just being up there. Getting some good shots on the Union. Oh, very nice. I'm trying to find HD now. Are they on the other team? Are they on the Union? Hold on. HD has been put in the penal colony today. Yes, we are on the Union. Currently, they got wrapped up by LFL and some other CSA elements in the big bushes. They've withdrawn to the single rail fence to establish a base of fire. Oh, here they are, with Mr. Targray. And 20 Georgia here as well. It's Colonel Coach is leading. What do you, uh. What can you tell me about Mr. Coach here and his leadership style? Oh, Staying. Coach is a very hands on guy. Like, if he says somebody or sees somebody who created a gap, he tries to exploit it. He's a silly, silly goofy little guy, but at heart, he's a really good leader, and we're, we're feeling comfortable when he's leading. 
So a lot of confidence in his uh, his leadership, even if it might seem a little crazy at the time, you might say. Hey man, if you go home after war and you're still sane, you're a coward. Uh, yeah, I might, I might be a living embodiment of that. <laughs> Left wheel. Takes one to no one. No. Oh, looks like, uh, speaking of though, Owens has switched the field here. He has now switched over to the CSA right side. Mm. Um, oh, let's see. It's a good counter battery shot I just saw there as well, Mr. Angle, against the Union Artie. Uh, but I think one thing Owens has created is an opportunity for that far left CSA uh, side to the Union. It opened up more space for them for more movement and leaving uh, LFL and uh, who else is that? Second Corps, I believe, skirmishers, to be open to any movement on the left and getting outflanked here. Uh, but yeah, I, me personally, I would have probably stayed on that left side, but uh, moving to the right is not a bad idea and probably maybe not the best at the moment, but I mean, from his eyes, it might be. EFA is taking a decent amount of casualties since they've decided to move up a little skirmish group right side fence towards Union Artillery and they've been targeted and lost a decent number of men. Yeah, I think you're right. I, and I believe that's uh, Zio and his guys, if I am correct. Yeah, so I think he needs to be a little bit more casualty uh, conscious. I, I don't mind the idea, but yeah, I, th I think that is dangerous um, if you get, get nailed. That crazy Italian guy. Seems like 20th Georgia's kind of uh, took advantage of Owens leaving that left side, kind of pushed out, but I think NFL's kind of caught them before they could push into any hot position here for them. Yeah, it looks like. Um, and we're still no sprinting and no bayonets yet, so. Um, but yeah, the ticket advantage has evened out a bit, but we're still about a halfway down. Um, let's see what else we got. So, what do you guys what do you guys think of the uh, current defensive setup here for the CSA? Um, mostly anchored on this center point. Do you think that's uh, that's working well, or do you think they might need to be uh, and make any adjustments besides the the Zio thing that we already talked about? Um, I mean. I, me personally, I'm not a fond of the centre, but there is okay, that kind of like defilade on either side and like the hill. But this map is just one of those maps that's hard to find anything that's like kind of like concealment or cover that can kind of hinder uh, there, casualties. But uh, the centre can be uh, also exploited by the Union Army if they get to it because they have some good line of sight on that. But me, fairly, I, I, I quite like to stick with that left side. I saved my, my little bit, but uh, I, I don't see any problems in with like the main body of the CSA, they're doing quite well. I personally think the CSA has left their right side a bit open since we have elements of the 6th New York infiltrating their sphere of influence but having to retreat. So generally having a good force around the point is not wrong, but you shouldn't leave any other site open or unwatched. Yep, I totally agree on that as well. Yep, and, uh, because it can lead to encirclement. Yeah, and it looks like they're getting a lot of uh, fire here, but Union has hit engaged, but again, that morale is getting a lot more even here, and we are now very close to the uh, bayonets and sprinting. How do you guys think that'll, uh, once we go live with that, how do you think that'll change up uh, the Union strat at all? Or do you think they'll just kind of maintain with what they got for a little bit longer? Uh, I, I think it might change up a little bit because as soon as that bayonets and Spriton gets uh, into play, you know, that can be where a lot of the CSA tar uh, tickets could be put down because, you know, those melees can put people in the skirmishing and out of line quite easily. Absolutely. And with the US cavalry having pistols, it's a good chance for them to lure in the CSA within two bayonet lengths and then just blast them. Since the revolvers have a very high uh, pot potency for close quarter combat. With the uh, CSA left, but if Georgia, SR, and HD are all going in here. Oh, it looks like we got a charge here on the left side. Here we go. 20th Georgia coming into LFL and TB. 
HD as well. Go boys, give him, give him hell. That's first on Edium. I see him going in there. I hear Fuji. Taking a look at the CSAR, they've moved one of the rifle pieces in front and from here going down to their level side, Ooh. having direct view of the enemy. Uh, seems like the Cavs, the USC and Sergeant Pilot here coming on the flank of the Union, maybe trying to utilize those pistols, or the CSA, sorry, maybe trying to use those pistols, but uh, I think the main body of the Union attack has crumpled, but they've still got some good strong units out here. No, especially like with those pistols, those are casualty producing weapons here. Yep. We can really handle those tickets. Uh, uh, DB charging PC. in, though. I think that might be the right decision. You don't want to let those pistols get you at distance. No, you don't. You don't want to. You try and shut those pistols down as quick as possible. Yeah. Now there's one function that always, you know, I wanted to have in the game, being able to fan your pistol, fan your revolver. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a Mississippi Remember. charging in now too. Oh. And it's just LFL is all that's left now. LFL can the Le Grand Armée hold the ground. Get those motherfuckers, get em, Seems get like they are at the uh, next time. Oh, we have, we, have pi we have pilot grounding the CSA with his pistol. CSA has been pushed back to their side of the point and it's being contested. Yep, seems like the Cav are retreating here. LFL, or AMV and LFL units and HL are kind of pushing counter charging here a little bit. Yeah, it looks like the Union's abandoning that. Uh, what do you guys think? Should the Union have kept pushing up the pressure, or do you think it's better to reconsolidate back and, and do another push? Um, I mean, if you look at it from the top view, especially for the officers on the ground not being able to see a lot, uh, the Cav still had the flag up and going strong, but I mean, if you compare that to the free CSA flags that were still up and spawning people in, it's a uh, difference in numbers. I know they've got those pistols, but if they all coordinate a challenge together, they can wipe that Cav unit out. So I think that was quite smart from Pilot to retreat from that position, try and get better coverage and wait for some more units to come back and pack them up. Yeah, an angle, another development we've had here over by the Union Arty. Zio Panama has eliminated the Union Arty now. Do you think the Union should have left a guard there, or do you think it was not worth it? Absolutely. They, they should have absolutely left somebody there, or the Union artillery should have been observant. Being enemy approaching now, Zio and his guys have denied the Union one of their potentially map-winning factors. And, and as you mentioned, they're, they're getting a lot of good tickets out of this as well. I just saw them nail a guy spawning in for five tickets, so... Absolutely, which now has to be cleaned out by the infantry, which has its hand full on the right side as well. So, denying the Union RD by the CSA actually throws in another coffin, in another nail into the coffin. Yep, and now we're at uh, just under 26 minutes. Union is behind on tickets. Still about half, I would say. Close to taking losses. CSA is a little bit above half. Um, I think I heard a little bit already, but what do you guys think right now as far as... Uh, I always hate predicting because I always get it wrong, but how do you think the match is shaping up right now? Um, I still think it's quite a close match, even though the CSA have got that ticket advantage, as you can see it. But, you know, if you compare how many more tickets that Union have and they can just bring them down very easily so I'd say it's quite even but uh, I think what the CSA need to do is just try and spread it out, get on those flanks, watch them and stuff but this cab unit right here, 6 New York, is doing very well with these carbines in the middle just soften them up in the middle, doing a lot of damage and a lot of tickets on them yeah. I mean, absolutely. Since the attacker has a ticket advantage on this map, it uh, it shouldn't be shouldn't be used recklessly. But as we say, uh, as I'm from Germany, yeah, don't uh, don't cherish the day before you've lived through the evening. Ah, I like that. That's pretty good. You're welcome. And, and looks like we got another charge. Looks like the UEC, Eleventh Mississippi, HD. A lot of guys coming in here. HD, yeah, HD's with them too. 
Okay, yep, it seems like Fort George was the only unit in there that's actually on those rocks. I'm yeah, not taking up any witness. Yeah, it's just yeah. them in a small 14th LA element, I think. And that yep. is, they're, they're running through poor Fort George here. Mm -hmm. That's a full Union team now, rotating out here. LFL trying to come in. I don't think they're doing much here. There's just so many of them. But uh, I think the whole CSA team might need to come in and enjoy it. Because that's they're standing in the line! Oh, 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 no, what a damage. Okay, yep, some CSA troops, Zeals guys actually forming up. Walk in front of the artillery. Now, as an arty man myself, one of our favorite things is behind the gun. You know? Oh, yeah. Potential, potential work hazard. <laughs> and the Union's continuing this attack. Here comes Pilot. He's pushing through. That next line, that HL line, is defeated. Yep, I mean, he's getting those pistols right yeah, in. And now it's the final yeah. DB, A and V is all that's left. Yep, but I think. Most of the Union, the big bulk of that attack actually held back on those rocks. Looks like 20th is trying to rotate out on the left flank of the CSA. But I think uh, the Union, I mean, they've still got a strong position here on those rocks, but the you know, CSA RD is still there. But I think they kind of lost out and a lot more t uh, damage to those tickets there. Now yeah. the ticket gap is closing. Yep, we have seen that was a pretty successful charge, I would say. Um, now, what do you think the CSA needs to do to try to counter this? Uh, it's quite a hard position at this point. Uh, I don't if if they charge or Geller, it's just going to really close that ticket gap again. I think what they need to do is just try and use this uh, this kind of bum that the point is on. Try and do some pop-up volleys, try and slow down this uh, Union push, try and slow down, use that clock as their friend for the defending, and then also I think Zio should keep focused on that Union uh, artillery because they are unprotected, mostly. Yeah, and speaking of the Yardie, usually I see people move uh, at least one of the guns kind of above the rocks to overview the east side of the field. They haven't done this. Do you think... Uh, do you think the CSA gun position here, would you change anything about it? That's kind of a leading question, uh, Mr. Engel. Um, I honestly wouldn't. I honestly think it's pretty good. I maybe would have put the leftmost rifled gun ahead of those bushes, to the left of them. But otherwise, uh, it's pretty good. Now, uh, what I would do as the CSA, since the Union has taken field, I would focus all of the artillery effort on dislodging the enemy on, un on the Union right. Yeah, I think I would agree, and it's right now it looks like they're still doing counter battery, which is not bad. But I would, I, I would definitely start transitioning at Artie to keep them as disrupted. And in fact, I'm looking at Fort George. It looks like they're starting to move the gun up now. Maybe they're gonna yeah. reposition it in that better firing position. Oh, but CSA just caught a shot, which is an entire crew wipe. So that's at least nine tickets for you. The gun is drenched in blood. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, this they did. Absolutely. That was nine tickets. That was nine infantrymen. Or oh, one officer and four infantrymen. And it looks like they're already starting to target the Union line as well now, so... And we're now at taking losses here for both teams at the 20 minute mark. Tickets yeah. are almost even. This is where the, the Union starts the, I think, 20 minute mark. Taking losses, CSA is not bad. Maybe not the best, but they've still got time to work out here to try and get them in the breaking. Uh, it just I, depends how the CC is going to play the rest of this match out. Yeah, what do you, how important do you think it is for the Union to take this side of the field here? How much of a difference do you guys think that makes? Is this is the first time they've really solidified this hold. Um, I mean, the rocks are a very good piece of cover on that left side. Uh, but, I mean, mostly I've seen a lot of the Union either take that CSA right and kind of circle around because normally the CSA are all on that left side because it's the most cover and you can kind of box them in, but uh, I don't see anything wrong with this play. It's also a strong position as well because, like, uh, the CSA are there, you know, they've got to push that far most left rifle gun up a little bit to those rocks to see it. But as we speak, I think 20th is going in here. 
Oh, yep, yep, here they come. I like that approach going through the uh, concealment with the bushes. Yep, I do like that play a lot. Coming in here, doing a lot of damage. Seems like 11th and 20th. Are they just hitting a bit short there? I believe that was Oh, oh and I like GameBot also on the flank. Oh, is that GameBot? No, that's who is this over here? Oh, that GameBot is currently single handedly dirty harrying the Union. Yeah. Poor Eddie and his guys. No, um, I quite like it. Looks like no, no, no. Uh, second core, Baron's coming up to your tanks and flank shots in. I wonder if he's going to focus on second US side or he's going to go for the main body. You have to say, Union is getting a grip of the field. Union artillery has now put an emphasis on color battery, which saves their own boys' lives. You can see two gun crews being targeted at the same time. So, what do you, do you think? That's uh, would would you? Uh, what do you think on that weight? I think originally you said one gun, but now two. Do you think that's worth it right now, or do you think that's over commitment? It's about identifying the uh, most imminent threat. So, if the enemy guns are the biggest casualty causes of your own guys, counter battery is the optimal countermeasure. At the moment, the Union has more or less 60% control of the field, so counter battery at the moment is is the right thing to do. And then what would uh, what would change that? Do you think it would be them seizing the point, uh, any other ground, or I think would... it would be dislodging the Union units from the CSA left, since they have captured some of those uh, concealment and cover positions. If the CSA could dislodge, for example, NYV with Parker and and JB over here, the CSA would gain more control of the field, and artillery would have to refocus, clearing the way for their for their men. Yeah, I mean, from what I can tell, it looks like the Union is slowly inching forward here. Um, and it's very deliberate. What do you, what do you think about this uh, attack strategy right now, Mr. Uh, Liam, here from the Union? Um, I think it's quite good. Uh, try and get those you know, 11 MS, you've got 88th New York, 20th Georgia, you know, SB all in the middle, like some good big units. And at, at the time before they even inched up, it was just 4th Georgia fighting them, so they could all just focus fire on that one unit and crimple them. But now more CSA start coming up, and that's even bigger targets to hit you. But I do quite, I do quite this, I do like this stretched out attack. You've got HD or Eddie on the left, uh, the right flank of the CSA, going to get some flanking shots in here and do some run up volleys. That's pretty good. Well, the CSA just focus on that centre part. So I, I think they're doing quite good. They're winning this shit out anyway at this time. So yeah, they kind of got them in a bit of a bowl now. Um. Yep. CSA needs to avoid encirclement. CSA needs to be the German Six Army now to avoid encirclement. <laughs> yes. No Stalingrad. No. No Stalingrad. No now we're a couple of years early for that. Yeah, that's the main thing. That's not the CSA got to stop that encirclement because as soon as that gets. Uh, stronghold and that supplement, that's it. It's pretty much no movement. Keep it up, so which which side do you guys would you guys wait uh, to try to break it? Would you try to go to the uh, CSA right or the CSA left? You think? Um, I would probably go the CSA right or Union left because uh, you know as soon as you get that center part dislodged, you can just hold that center and you know keep them out in the open on the little. Because where the CSA spawn when they're coming down, it's like a hill. So pretty much as soon as you dislodge that centre part, you leave them in the high ground. It might not be the best, but see lost distance and you've got defilades that you can use, utilise for that, it's, it'll probably pay off. Absolutely, since the Union left side, or sees a right side, is rather open. They're occupied in the centre. It's a good idea to put pressure there. Also, what could work is just overextending them on the Union right side, just bending the bow until it breaks. Yep, that is also a good one. But I do, the Union have seemed like the right flank of the Union has pushed up slightly. 
Trying to put some pressure on those two units on the left. Yep, both 11th MS and 6th New York have moved up a, a good amount of paces from that initial cover position here and kind of closing that uh, that noose a bit here. Mm -hmm. They're slowly inching closer than uh, closing this bowl here because even more CSA units are rotating in the middle here. Or you're leaving on the CSA left as second core that is quite a small unit. So like, this could be where the Union capitalize on this and close them in. Yeah, we're about even on tickets now as well. In fact, 11th MS is going in pretty deep here. Yeah, they're going in quite deep. I, I don't mind that play, it's as long, it's as long as if 6 New York went in with them, that would have worked out even better. Yeah, I think Parker's not happy they win it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, people are inching closer. The scene that's popping up to mind is Gettysburg, little round top, reloading each other 20 yards away. Yeah, I, I would. Well, now we've got HL on this uh, right side. Do you think the uh, CSA should risk an attack over here? At least clear off these guys and, and give them some breathing room, even be going on break and doing it? I mean, uh, if HL do it and try and dislodge that, it would be a good idea, because then the only thing is, is if you don't you, if you if don't leave a big strong unit in the centre of the CSA, the other, the other centre union units will just run in, charge them out, and leave you out in the open. Uh, but I don't see, if, if HL do charge, it, I don't see it not working, you know, they could uh, take out set US, take a little stronghold there and get some flanking fire if they hold it. Yeah, I mean, it just uh, I'd be interested if you guys agree, it just seems like right now the CSA is just in reaction mode, and the Union is just kind of having their way with them a bit, and just, yeah. yeah it's... Or rather damage control. Check. Well, it's damage control, but it's not enough to... I mean, they're behind on tickets now, and they're on breaking. I mean, the, the 12 minutes left, there's, there's nothing working in the CSA favor now. There nope. needs to be a tight grip around point now. The CSA should not be bothered with anything else. Uh, yeah, oh, here comes like Pilot out on the flank here. Yep. I, I do like this cav unit right here. You know, it's uh, it can really work from this distance as well with these accurate and fast shooting rifles. At the moment it's more like a three quarters in circlement. Yep. Now the CSA has sent one unit far out here. The Fort Georgia uh, is heading out here. Um, I, don't, I quite like this play actually. Trying to overextend that Union, le uh, union left because you can see them reacting to this. But if fourth does, if uh, Owens does charge this, then that, that means the Union kind of have to that centre bit. But it seems like the Union centre's charging in here. I don't think they will break this centre CSA to actually hold quite strong. Yeah, I think this might have been a little bit too early. I, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure if this charge was uh, warranted right now. We'll see, it might still like work. Ed, Eddie's going in here. I, I wish Owens just go in right now, come into the rear. Stand out here. I would play for time at the moment since 10 minutes 50 is by Wolf Wright's margin still a decent amount of time. Oh, the, and having a ticket advantage, I would just shoot it out with them. Yeah, they the cab, the cab went yeah, in as well. In oh, this might be it though. If Never Owens, mind. If Owens goes in here, that's going to be a lot of stuff. But I don't. He is trying to play that point and try to slow the gap down. But uh, uh, give enough time for his. Uh, oh, timely mm -hmm. Arty shot though. Oh, good shot by Arty. That is good combined arms warfare. Yep. That oh. is artillery should be the sword in the hand of the infantry. Yep, it should. But I, I don't still even know if that's going to be enough though. The Union has multiple flags up, and with a five-second respawn, that is a lot of troops coming on to point. No, especially with that cav unit, there's a lot of pistols coming in tonight. You know? yeah. Yep, CSA is CSA is on the brink of defeat, though. But we shouldn't we shouldn't say that they didn't fight for it. It was a bloody fight up until yeah. the end. Oh, oh, more already coming in. Can that? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I don't think they'll make it in time, but. If they do make it in time with those numbers, it will stop them from camping. I'm kind of surprised the Union hasn't pushed forward to meet them. Yeah, they basically want to let them run into the knife. 
Yeah, but then they uh, might be able to get on point, especially with that already. They might be able to hit the overtime, see? Oh, oh, oh. Artillery. Oh, oh, artillery is the surgeon. You let, uh, if you had fought them a little bit forward, they wouldn't they, you'd buy two or three seconds. That might have been the match. Yeah, that's why it's so important to time everything. Yep, that's if I would, I would have done what the CSA had done is just try and get that. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even run into any like stabbing them. I would have run past that front unit and just to get on myself in the camp. Point. Oh, I hear Odin. Drag is in here somewhere. But now the Union, are, yep, Union are coming back in here, they might put them in the last stand and that really not be it. Well, there, there's a danger though if the Union goes into haphazard and gets a lot of out of lines and they might get panicked into final push here. Yep, that might explain those tickets down and make it an even match. What CSA needs to do now is just blob up on point in the defilade and just shoot everything that comes over the crest of that hill. Yep. But stand tight. But what I would be doing is just killing all these rambles from the Union, trying to get those tickets down as quick as possible. Yeah, the CSA artillery should also focus on the Union artillery to diminish their tickets. Yeah, right. I agree with you as well on both those counts. I think that's where you can make some good money right now. And it looks like the Union has figured it out and they've stopped the charge, at least for now. Not over yet. No, we thought that was the end. That's why I'm always careful about predictions. I was going to be like, what are the final thoughts? It's like, no, 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 let me wait a second here. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that CSAR day, I've got to be focusing on that. Kind of that. I don't... I don't care if there's a big chunky union units standing in the open, try and get those tickets down, focus on those small groups. Yeah, full credit to the CSIR for that. They stopped they stopped it. Yep. Well no, that was it was very key timing and very good shots that were very close to the end to the uh, your friendly, so those were not easy shots either. Oh Union is moving up a cannon close to point. Are we gonna see close up canister or gaze fire? Oh they're lining who are they lining up exactly? They're lining up HL. Captain Lamette is about to receive. Let's look for that shot. Incoming. Oh, went over. Yeah, a little bit high on that shot. Yep. Oh, that went that went to Richmond. I don't think HL lost anyone in that one now. So. But I mean, six New York coming over here. That cannon shot. Oh, did they just get hit by a cannon? I saw a lot of them. I shot. think that was a canister shot. I might be wrong on that. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm seeing a canister. Uh, some dust coming up from a canister okay, shot here into the six. Yeah, Union already is now moving both their pieces more in an offensive way. The Union has time. The Union can play with the CSA at the moment. They still got time. So do you agree? I, I mean, I'm kind of assuming from the tone, but do you agree with uh, the Union kind of sitting back here, let the already come up and kind of soften it up before an attack? Yes. As a little bit of a sadist myself, I would I would say let him cook. Oh, I don't yeah. know about this 20th Georgia coming up so fast. Oh, by themselves. These are a lot of tickets they're giving away. Yep, uh, but I, if I was a union right now, I would just be sitting back and just volleying. Look how, look how close they are to uh, the final push now. Yeah, if the CSA can kill a lot of them before they even get to their bayonets, they might be able to hold and put them in the final push. But yeah, I'm, uh, not, I'm not sure. We now we got two USC charging in. I, 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 this doesn't make sense to me, to be honest with you. What do you guys think? There comes an RD shot. I mean, I. For the union, I wouldn't like this individual union uh, union units charging in because that just means you waste a lot of tickets, put yourself in the final push, and then if the CSA do hold and kill most of you, that means a lot of you are spawning from main, and you know that time goes down from like five minutes to like three yeah. or two, you know, so uh, really works up in time here. But if I was a union side, I would be sitting back and killing as many CSA as I can. Yeah, so there's there's the final push. Still three minutes, so it's still a decent amount of time, but... Yeah, it's still, still a lot of time to work with. Right. I mean, Southwest. a lot of CSA are dying, you know, but they've still got, still got those, uh, still got enough people up 
up and running. Yeah, Union Cavalry is meeting head up with LFL. Can the Grand Armee hold the Blue Tide? It looks like they're disrupting it pretty well. But the pistols are doing their job, tearing holes into them like into a handkerchief. Yeah, I just saw it, watched Ollie cut, just nailed maybe four or five guys here. Well, he's been called a nailer in dark alleys. Oh, well, you know. Like the UAC, TRSBAGL, are coming up on the flank here, or 11MS, I don't know who this is, just it's mismatching units at this point. Uh, but coming up on this CSA flank, just trying to kill as many as they can. I do like that. Kill as many as you can before you even charge in. Yeah, you got some time. You know, two minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but you can you can get three, you know, two or three shots in before you have to charge. Mm, yeah. Oh, and like the CSA is counter kind of charging. Yeah. What do you think about this move? Um, I don't blame it. If there was, uh, if it was just them, and well, I mean, twenty of coming in to give them uh, backup. But I think if you had a lot more CSA units and white those guys, you put them back to main, it would have worked. But uh, it seems like the most of the rest of the units coming in. So, uh, sees uh, as I as I would say, start fight till the last man, as I would tell my guys. Yeah, it looks like the unions recovered the flag, so now I am gonna make a prediction. I think this is it. What what have you guys thought about this match back and forth? Starting out with uh, you, Mr. Angle. Um, in the beginning, it looked pretty much like the CSA stood there like Stonewall Jackson, like a grand old Stonewall. But uh, in the end, it got it got cracked by the blue tide. Yep, I couldn't say it's much better. The CSA did hold it strong at the start, you know, a lot of just killing a lot of them, putting the tickets down, but the Union did just capitalize on those small units moving. Like fourth going from the left to the right, opening up some space from the left, you know, uh, second corps moving to the artillery, getting some good skirmish out of line tickets and that. And that's what kind of just makes the game, is those, you know, small units, units moving and that, just open up space. But, I mean, both sides fought very well. Ardy and both sides done very well as well, but, uh, uh, I mean, Union did nothing wrong in my eyes. And so and it's their shot from a CSA cannon. Oh, they killed the guy! They missed him! <laughs> the last stand of Forbin. Yep. Charge. But yeah, I mean, both sides played a lot, of, a lot of blood shedded on this uh, prime forward map. But yeah, the CSA at the start looked that strong. But the Union just saw those small details in those uh, CSA lines and just capitalized on So There he goes. Done it. Yep, no, that was uh, very fun to, at least for me to watch. So uh, thank you to both of you guys. We've got one more map to go. And uh, hopefully it's as uh, close as that one was. So I'll let the uh, end screen go. But um, yeah, thanks again, guys. And uh, one more map. Nice. Actually kind of curious on these casualties, too. We haven't broken 4,000 yet, have we? Oh, that would be a sight to see. I don't think we did it on this one, but... Oh, and I am pretty damn happy. HD has, has almost 12 people, which is good. Oh, nice. I'm just shy of 3,000. Yeah, it was good, man.